So what are sentence particles? Well, they are very important in Somali grammar. And uh, they are small words that uh, occur also in some other languages. Uh, and uh, they express what kind of, of a sentence we are uh, dealing with. What kind of sentence is it? Um, and the sentence particle uh, is in the sentence to tell us that. Uh, some languages have many particles of this type and other languages don't have many or none at all even, um, or almost none. I suppose most languages have some. Uh, but what is special when it comes to Somali is that every sentence needs to have a sentence particle. There are a few exceptions, but there are really, uh, really few. So almost all sentences need a sentence particle in Somali. And as an example of, of what uh, this might be, uh, there are several languages in Europe uh, that have a question particle and that would be very much comparable to uh, the Somali system of, of sentence particles. So for example Finnish, uh, in order to uh, express a question that requires yes or no as an answer, uh, in Finnish uh, the particle ko is added after the verb, and it's written together with the verb in Finnish. So uh, in Finnish, uh, it's not enough to change the word order, like in, in Swedish or English, you are Somali, are you Somali? Uh, you also need in Finnish to add this question particle. Uh, and in French, there is a, a phrase, esque, that can be added in order to signalize a question that then requires yes or no as an answer. In French, it's not obligatory to use it, but, but it's very frequent at the beginning of yes, no questions. And, and this is what also happens in Somali. But what is different in Somali is that also statements, declarative statements, uh, where you tell people some piece of information, some fact, something that you claim. Also those statements, those declarative statements, need to be marked with a particle. And that particle is wa. And the, the, the job that this particle does is to tell uh, the listener or the reader that this sentence is a declarative statement. So if we want then to say Hassan is a Somali, uh, then uh, we need to have this <clears throat> uh, declarative particle. Uh, and um, in this kind of sentence where we have two nouns and uh, in English or Swedish we have is, uh, between them. Uh, Somali doesn't have any verb at all. Uh, there is no verb uh, corresponding to is in this kind of construction. So we only have the two nouns and in between them we have the sen uh, sentence particle, the declarative sentence particle wa. So Hassan wa Somali. Hassan is a Somali. Uh, but of course, most sentences contain some kind of verb as the predicate of, of, the, of the sentence. And then the wa goes before the verb. Uh, so we have, for example, arrived, timit. And uh, in this example, then we put wa before the verb. Sahra wa timit. Sarah arrived. 
for Sarah has arrived. Um, and this, I hope, proves that wa does not mean is, that wa is a word that signalizes a declarative sentence. Uh, it's also possible to add the pronoun she right after uh, the particle. So we can have sahra wa aitimit. That's also a possibility. And those two words can also be contracted into one word, and then we get sahra wa aitimit. This uh, particle wa is also used in questions if the question contains a specific question word. And then the, the answer has to um, contain some new piece of information that answers, gives an answer to this question word. So um, two of the most common Question words are what and who. Uh, and uh, in questions with these two question words, we will also find wa, the declarative particle. Um, and uh, if we then want to ask what is this, we get kani wa mahai, where wa sticks with um, mahai which is a predicate part of this question, and, and kani is the subject part, which we can also see by, by the ending i, which uh, marks the subject in Somali. So the i on kani is a subject ending that tells us that kani is the subject word. And then mahai has to be the predicate part of the sentence. Then uh, who is this? Uh, uh, has two different forms, a feminine form and a masculine form. Uh, so we uh, need to have a look and see uh, what we think about the person who we are going to ask about, if it is a woman or a man, and, and use the, the form we think is appropriate. So in the feminine, tani wa tuma, and in the masculine, tani wa kuma. And uh, the consonants T and K are, are um, very, very frequently uh, marking uh, the feminine and masculine gender in Somali. Uh, then we have a special uh, particle, interrogative particle, question particle, ma which is used in questions that uh, need to be answered with a yes or a no. And uh, this question particle, ma, goes right before the verb, with the predicate part of the sentence. Um, so we take away the declarative wa and uh, replace it with the interrogative ma. And then we get sahro ma timit did Sarah arrive as compared to, to the statement Sahro wa timit Sarah arrived. We then get Sahro ma timit. Um, if the predicate part of the sentence contains a noun, then we need to emphasize that noun. We need to um, make clear. Uh, which noun we are asking about, which noun is uh, questioned. And we do that by adding another sentence particle uh, of a special type called focus particle uh, after the word that we want to emphasize. So uh, we need the question particle, ma, uh, before that noun and the focus particle for emphasis after the same, after that noun. So um, the word Somali is the word we are asking about. 
if it's true or not, that he's Somali. And we then kind of surround that word with the question particle ma and the focus particle ba. Uh, and that alone can also be a, a question, just ma Somali ba, meaning is, is he Somali? Uh, but here we then have a subject word as well, so is Hassan Somali? Um, these two particles, ma and ba, can be uh, put together into one word. They can fuse uh, or they can be contracted. Uh, and such fused forms, where two words have uh, merged into one word, are called contractions in, in grammar. So we can have the separate words ma plus ba, one on each side of the word that we are referring to, uh, or we can have them together as one word. And then mia goes after the word we are questioning, the word we are emphasizing. So either Hassan Matsumali Ba or Hassan Somali Mia uh, means the same. So some more examples. Um, what is this? Kani uh, is what we already saw. And since it contains a question word, we use the declarative uh, sentence particle. We can shift the word order, so the particle goes together with the question word, the predicate part, and the subject word can move around. But these two have to stick together. Uh, so um, uh, the only movement that is possible then is to put kani at the end after those two words. So we can also say wamahai kani. Uh, the answer might be Kaniwa mis. We could also ask, is this a table? Is this a table? And, and also in English or Swedish, we would have some emphasis on, on table. Is this a table? Uh, and to do that, then in Somali, we, we have the question particle before the emphasized word, and we have the focus particle really marking that emphasis, and that goes after the, the noun. So we, we can then have kanima uh, mis ba. Or we can put those two particles together into one word and put it after the noun. Kani mis mia. And then some answers. Yes, this is a this is a table. Ha kaniwa mis. Or no, this is a chair. Maya. And the same can be done with, with um, the question word who, referring to a man. It will be then kani wa kuma. Or we can move kani to the end. Wa has to stick with the question word. Wa kuma kani. And uh, we can also ask. Uh, with a name, for example, then is this Hassan? Uh, and then ma before, ba after, or mia, both of these particles together after the name. So, kani ma Hassan ba, or kani Hassan mia. And uh, the feminine form, tani, tuma gives us the question tani wa tuma or wa tuma tani and uh, if we want to ask a yes no question uh, again then uh, ma before ba after or both together in one word mia after the noun so tani ma mariam ba tani marian mia Uh, yes, 
and then uh, of course uh, it doesn't always have to be uh, kani tani as the subject of the clause uh, the subject can be any word any noun for example a name so if we want to ask is marian a teacher uh, then marian goes as the subject and now the predicate part is a teacher and the question particle and ba surrounding the word we want to ask about or following after in the form mia so marian ma ma'alimat ba or marian ma'alimat mia uh, are, are synonymous questions uh, that's all for now